What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski and I'm back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video we're going to be back with the tier list video, everyone's favorite video on my channel. So in this video we are doing the tier list for the upcoming September month of on global of course. We're obviously shifting our, our focus not from Japan tier list but over to global tier list now. Uh, and a little bit different from previous video we are going back to the old style just because not only did you guys prefer the old style just from the comments alone um, but it also was easier on me to actually do this style as well and I felt like just looking at the two styles this one definitely presented better as well so we're gonna stick with the old style for now and if I do come up with some other concept or, or of another tier list style I'll test it out with you guys and see how we go, but as for now, we're going to be sticking with this with every single month. So, as you guys know, every single month with these tier list videos, I basically rank each legend in the game, well, not every legend, but the, the decent legends in the game into certain categories, uh, ranging from tier 0, tier 1, and also tier 2, and we also have a Notable Legends tier as well. So, Notable Legends, which are the legends that we're going to be going through first, are just the legends that are not as powerful as some of the top tier legends, but are actually really good legends to have. So, let's start with that. Now, before we get into this tier list, I just want to say, you know, this is all just my personal opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's completely fine. Leave your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. But I think just in terms of this tier list, I do think that a lot of people will actually agree with the characters and where they're placed. So, let's Let's go ahead and go through this. We have the notable legends. We've obviously got Marco, Shirohoshi, Usopp, Magellan, and also Buggy, which obviously recently got a 6+, plus, which is awesome. Now, Marco is a great unit. Obviously, you get the essentially a full heal for most teams and an orb boost. Um, really good for Lucy teams, good for powerhouse teams, but the thing with powerhouse is that they're not as common nowadays. Powerhouse are a little lacking. They don't have that many good powerful utility units which is why you don't see powerhouse teams that often v2 luchi is still a pretty decent captain but for some of the most difficult content he can still clear it but definitely not an ideal team to use uh, then you got shirohoshi right next to marco who again is like a full heal for your team essentially um, but she's definitely way more useful giving you a full board of orbs the rainbow orbs that can't be shuffled into anything else and it also gets around enemy uh interrupts that will you know activate on orb shuffle so shirohoshi's great for that you know like raid luchi where he has an interrupt where you if you shuffle your orbs he shuffles them back to the negative orbs that he gives you so you have shirohoshi to basically negate that and that's why she is so good and also the fact she's a full heal so yeah she's a fantastic unit even on teams where she isn't boosted she's great to use uh, you got usopp there who again is like not a great unit even like honestly he could kind of drop out of the notable legends because there aren't that many instances where you need to delay the enemy at this current time anymore. Um, he's 6-star and he's 6-star plus. I mean, they're okay, but you just don't see them around that often and they're not really needed. So, at this current time, they'll stay here for now, but honestly, you <laughs> if you need to use Usopp to delay, typically you should, you know, either make a better team or, you know, just, I don't know, man. You, you really shouldn't be using Usopp for any piece of content uh, specifically. Uh, then you got Magellan, who should be getting his 6 plus relatively soon on Global, so look forward to that, all Magellan owners. He does get a lot better with his 6 plus. His Venom or his Toxic works uh, much quicker, uh, stacking up to 3 million damage, I believe. So once we get that, he's going to be even better. But even still now on Global, he's very nice to use. Um, maybe not as a captain as much, but definitely as a sub. He's a really good unit uh, just on any team, really. Kind of like Shirohoshi, like you can just chuck him in on any team and just kind of like cheese the content just by poisoning. So... He's a really good unit. And then obviously you got Buggy, who, again, you're not going to be using for high-level content, but he is quite useful for getting those dupe drops, of course. But these are all the notable legends, and I just kind of wanted to quickly go through them and just tell you guys why they're in the notable legends tier specifically. But now let's go ahead and jump into the tiers. So now we're going to talk about tier 2. So tier 2 are the third lowest tier. And with this specific tier, we've got some older type of legends, and we do have a couple of newish ones in here as well with those 6 pluses, but this specific tier is dominated by 6 plus characters. So we've got Blackbeard, of course, who still is a game-breaking legend, as you can use his captain ability to just bypass enemy barriers and defensive buffs. The only thing he doesn't go through is blue defense up shield, which is completely fine. He's still really good for a lot of content. So yeah, Blackbeard's nice because you can go ahead and use a friend captain that is like anything. You 
can use a Lucy, you can use a Judge, which I think is a little bit hard to build with because you need those four classes and one of every color. Wouldn't suggest that. You can use Doe Flamingo. There's a lot of different team compositions utilizing Blackbeard. So um, just because he can be utilized with a lot of other friend captains and because he's game breaking, it's kind of why he's here. But he is only a 2.75 captain still, which. You know, this guy really needs a 6 plus, in my personal opinion. Uh, next, you have Akainu, though. So, Akainu is kind of outshadowed now by the V2 release of himself. And, uh, yeah, there's no real reason to use this guy over the V2 version in a lot of instances. Uh, unless if it's, like, just mono dex content, then, yeah, this guy's going to tear through it. But still, on V2 Akainu, you can still use strength characters. So, I don't know. You know, strength Akainu is still not too bad. You actually can partner him up with a friend V2 Akainu, and you can still do some pretty cool stuff with that. But overall, there isn't too many circumstances where you need to use version 1 Akainu anymore, and he's not really tanky either, he doesn't have a health boost, no damage reduction, so he dies rel relatively quickly. And then the next two legends are free spirit related, we have Time Skip Luffy and 6 plus Sabo, both of these characters I believe in terms of their captain ability are about equal, um, the fact that Time Skip Luffy is only a 2.5 base, a lot of the time he has some damage reduction, and then you have Sabo, who is a pretty decent captain, 2.75, and he also gives a health and recovery boost, a lot of people overlook that, but when you have him as a captain and you pick up a recovery orb, you're healing for a pretty substantial amount, and the thing about these two characters is, is that Luffy probably has just a slightly better captain ability, but Sabo's special ability is miles better than Timeskip Luffy, especially with the free spirit support we have now. Timeskip Luffy's special is kind of pointless uh, for a lot of free spirit teams, so uh, Sabo is definitely a much better unit to use as a captain slash sub in comparison to Timeskip Luffy, but Timeskip Luffy partnered up with Luffy and Ace can still go ahead and tear through content just as easily as he did back in the day. So just because of the, the fact that you can partner him up with some pretty powerful free spirit support, that's why he's here as well as Sabo. The next legend here is Law V2, uh, which is the Striker variation. The Cerebral variation is in the tier above, just because Strikers at this current point are kind of starting to drop away. It's not the fact that Strikers have gotten worse, it's the fact that other classes have gotten so much better. And to run a mono Striker team against some co content now with specifically V2 Law as your captain, you're going to have a little bit of trouble clearing the content just because of your damage output. V2 Law, even though he is quite tanky with the healing that you can provide with him, it's the fact that he's only a three times base captain. He does have a very good special ability of that um, fixed damage and also the 2.25 orb boost for his class, but the class itself can have a little bit of struggle getting around certain debuffs, and specifically, I do think that Necromamushi or Cat Viper is a much better choice as a captain currently on Global, and that's literally the only reason why he's in this tier, because he's just not as good as Neko as a captain at this current time. Moving on, we've got Kuzan as well, Kuzan 6+, plus. he's a great unit, and kind of like the same reason why he's here is why, uh, you know, Sakazuki is here, is like their V2s are just so much better, and, uh, well, the thing is, you can still use Kuzan to click content, but just the fact that he is quite restricted in the fact that you do have to continuously kill things every single turn, and you do have to stall for your special abilities, it does get quite tricky trying to stall if you do want to use this guy as a captain, however, most times you're going to be using him as a sub, and as a sub, he's still quite good, he does the 100k damage through barriers and also does the chain lock and the ability that isn't really used as much and what he was really originally built for the extending attack and orb boost effect like that kind of ability just isn't that great because it's only a one turn boost like v2 ray dofi he's a two turn extender which is definitely a lot better because there are a lot of boosts in the game that are huge like 2.25 boosts but are only for one turn so if you're only extended it for one more turn and then you go through into the next room and the enemy has a preemptive you kind of lose that so for the you know the best thing with this kuzan is to use it on a two turn boost or a three turn boost already which it doesn't really matter at that point so kuzan for his intended original use isn't really that great but still as a sub you know on lucy teams on striker teams or i wish shooters were good but you know that would be great but uh it's still 2.5 chain lock you can't go wrong with that Next is Hody Jones, obviously the Speed King himself, and it's just the fact that he's just not that reliable, not really for high level content, mainly used for speed farming easy content, and I guess you can almost put him in a notable tier, if he was ever to drop down from tier 2, he'd probably go in the notable legends tier just because of how good he is at farming, uh, you know, Fortnite and stuff like that, you know, you can do like one minute runs and complete your Fortnite in like half an hour, it's extremely good. 
Um, so yeah, Hody's here, and then you got Mihawk and Zoro here, the slashy units who just are not as good as V2 Fuji. Uh, Mihawk is quite situational, but you know when you do use his special, that's a really good special ability. And even Zoro is a really good booster for slashes as well. But just the fact that he's just not as good as the tier one legends is just simple as that. Then you got Crocodile, who is a very good unit, uh, two times type booster as well as a 20% health cutter for Cerebrals. However, the fact that uh, they're just a better captains for Cerebral, in my opinion. Uh, the fact that he does have to rely on being at low health in order to get his massive attack boost is quite annoying. And as a sub, most people will still opt to use the Valentine's Day Nami over this Crocodile just because Nami is a multi-turn type booster and can get up to a 2.25 times type booster, whereas Crocodile is just a one turn, two times flat. So. In most cases, Valentine's Nami is going to be the better booster, and in most cases with a Cerebral team, if you have that 1.75 boost for that one turn, that is going to be enough to kill off the boss. And even if you don't kill him, you get a 2.25 in the next turn as well. So... Crocodile just isn't as good as some of the other Cerebral units in the game. And to finish off this tier, we have Bartolomeo 6 Plus, who as we mentioned before is, you know, with the Striker stuff, they're just not as powerful anymore, but he would mainly be useful the driven, with the Driven type teams. And he's also another unit you can partner with Blackbeard, however, I wouldn't really suggest that specifically, just because of the fact that, uh, you know, Barto is only a three times captain. So you really want to be using, you know, someone really powerful with Blackbeard. But Barto is actually quite an interesting unit because you can partner him with some really interesting units like uh, Neko. You can partner him with Doflamingo V2. Uh, there's lots of really cool options that you have with this Barto, and uh, his special ability is still pretty good as well. But as, as I said again, you know, these units are just not as good as the next tier of legends that we're going to be talking about. Now we move on to the tier number one, the tier right before all of the god legends in the game. So here we have on tier one, we've got Cat Viper, version two Luchi, version two Fujitora, version two Rayleigh, version two Law 6 Plus, Frankie, Robin, and also V1 Law 6 Plus. So with Cat Viper, as we mentioned before, he is the best striker captain in the game. And if you are gonna run strikers, you should be using this guy as your captain. Some people will say you should use Lucy, but when you have Neko, you don't have that restriction of having to run only strength that's quick. And some of the cool strikers in the game are also signed in. So having Neko to give you a little bit more flexibility instead of Lucy is quite nice. However, as an overall unit, obviously Lucy is a much better unit than what Cat Viper is overall. But if you are wanting to run striker teams, Neko is gonna be your guy. Next, we've got V2 Luchi, who is very similar in the fact that, you know, Cat Viper is the best striker captain in the game. Luchi's the best powerhouse legend in the game. Well, technically, you can count Judge as the best powerhouse if you're running, you know, the like the mono uh, Germa team. But outside of that, V2 Luchi is probably the next best uh, powerhouse lead. And his special ability, I still, you know, I love this unit so much. I guess it could be a little bit biased. Some people might not agree Luchi to be in this tier. I think he definitely deserves to be in this tier. Uh, he's still able to clear a lot of the difficult content, and I love his special ability. It does like four different things, defense down, a mass AoE damage, healing, and also full border matching orbs for his own team. Like, I love this unit so much. Really good unit, works well with the Zanisha ship, who is like one of the best ships in the game, if not the best ship in the game. Love the Zanisha ship, so whenever you can use that ship, it's going to make your team so much better than what it was previously. Then we've got version 2 Fujitora, who unfortunately isn't really as great as some of the other legends that have come out in 2018. And it just comes down to the fact that slashes just kind of lack. Um, this guy as a captain isn't still terrible, but uh, his special ability doesn't, doesn't do much. And that's the real big downside is, you know, with some of the other 2018 legends, they have some pretty unique and some pretty crazy special abilities. Whereas you have Fujitora who just kind of just sits there and does nothing. He does a bit of damage, he gives you some orbs, and that's about it. Um, and it's, it's, it's really annoying that uh, Slashes didn't really get the love that they kind of deserved with version 2 Fujitora. Um, but, you know, there are some really good Slashes that are to come out in 2018. It doesn't really make Fujitora much better, but I just think Slashers just need a better dedicated captain to their class. And whether that be a version 2 Zoro, a version 2 Mihawk, who knows? But they definitely need just a better captain. But still looking at Fujitora, he is definitely a much better captain and can clear a lot more content than some of the other units in Tier 2 down below. 
Next unit is going to be version 2 Rayleigh, who is slightly better than Crocodile. As we mentioned before, Crocodile being a, a legend that has to run at low HP. Then you've got Rayleigh, who also has to run at low HP, which isn't always the best. But the thing is, Rayleigh being a rainbow captain and having a god tier special ability. Like, if this was a tier list just solely based on special abilities, this guy would be, like, number 1 or number 2 in the game, in my opinion. It does so many things. 200k fixed. Uh, all manipulation of low health, he does an all boost, 3x chain lock, and 90% damage reduction under 30% as well. Like, man, this guy is so goddamn good. One thing that I do find annoying about Rayleigh is his sailor abilities are pretty bad, which means that if you are running him as a sub, which in most cases you will be, he doesn't really provide much for your team outside of his special ability, which I think is a shame. It would have been nice if he made a certain orb matching for, like, uh, cerebral or all characters that would be so goddamn good but you still cannot deny the fact that Rayleigh is at the moment on global one of the best subs in the game and if you do opt to run him as a captain he can still do some really cool stuff I mean I beat Colosseum Burgess with this guy I farmed Colosseum Burgess with V2 Rayleigh captain and he did work extremely well I gotta say so um, yeah I, I love version 2 Rayleigh and I think he definitely deserves the T1 positioning if he had a better captain ability he would probably jump all the way up to T0 Moving on, we've got 6 plus Law, the Cerebral version, definitely miles better than the Striker version, just because of the fact that he is a Cerebral booster instead of a Striker booster, which we already know, we've already discussed, Cerebrals are much better than Strikers, and also the fact that his special ability is, in my opinion, much better, the fact that it does AoE fixed damage, it doesn't do as much fixed damage, but it does AoE fixed damage, and also removes one turn of barriers as well, so V2 Law 6 plus just automatically a, a better unit overall in comparison to the striker version of this character and yeah just the fact that he's a cerebral unit is just so much better as well and that's literally the only reason why he's in tier one is because he's much better than his striker variation but the fact that he's only a three times chain uh, three times chain three times attack boosting captain means that he is, he doesn't have enough damage to push up into that tier zero positioning but law will still be able to clear a lot of content in the game just because you can partner him up with a lot of the other god tier cerebral captains next legend is going to be frankie so frankie uh not one of my favorite legends in the game but he's very very fun to use and also the fact that you can run a full rainbow team opting you know you do have you know those specific classes on your crew and he is his own crew's type booster as well and the fact he does have that amazing captain action going into general frankie and getting all those various effects and you know not being able to be blown away and you get more damage output if you run a fighter team and you can do aoe hits this is a pretty interesting unit and as i said you know you can run just about uh, a full rainbow team and uh, he can work really well with some of these other legends that we've already talked about specifically shirohoshi works extremely extremely well on a Frankie team because that's one of the problems with Frankie is that he kind of struggles to get some orbs or guaranteed orbs so you would kind of opt to run either like a mono free spirit team or a free spirit slash fighter team you know and that can kind of work with Frankie you know especially with the Luffy Ace batch that actually definitely helps out Frankie a lot and you can partner him up with friend Luffy Ace and, and all those characters it works pretty awesome actually so you can do that and um, as we mentioned you know fighters will enable Frankie to do more damage and all of the Luffy Ace batch are free spirit fighter characters so you can you can do some pretty cool things uh with, with frankie specifically and uh as we mentioned you know, he, he kind of struggles with orbs and shirahoshi helps with that you can get rainbow orbs that can't be shuffled and you know you can run some other really cool units to get you through the content and as we said you know he is kind of like a rainbow unit so you can run any utility support units that you need just about in order for you to get around certain debuffs from the enemy so in my opinion he's much more versatile and more powerful than some of the legends in tier 2 and that's why i leave him here in tier number one last two units are going to be nico robin and law so with robin as you mentioned cerebral are really good and robin being the one of the better cerebral captains and also having a special that just does not allow you to die is pretty goddamn cool and the great thing about robin that a lot of people skip over is her recovery boost so as a captain she gives i believe a 1.5 recovery so if you're running double robin and you're picking up food orbs you're healing for like six seven thousand and with her 20% damage reduction, and if you're running double Robin, as we said, uh, and you have damage reduction so sockets on top of that, it's around about 40% damage reduction or 50%, 40% damage reduction. So you can take hits for days when you're running the double Robin Cerebral team. And, you know, if you are about to take a death hit, activate a special and you're going to live. So Robin is a fantastic unit. However, only being a 3.25 captain doesn't enable her to go up into tier zero, I wouldn't say. 
um, because her special ability just allows you to tank damage and, you know, gives you a couple of orbs. She doesn't provide much for your team. And a lot of people have found an issue with Robin is the fact that, yeah, if you're running double Robin, your four bottom units have to be, you know, kind of carrying your team because you need, you know, your damage boosters, you need debuff removers. And if you're only relying that to four characters, that does make it quite annoying. That's why I always say this. I say this a lot. The fact that if your captain is like a, a type booster, an orb booster, and an orb manipulator, that is like what you want because then you can dedicate the rest of your crew to like debuff removal. And that's one of the best things that you can kind of do in the game. And the fact that Robin doesn't do that is quite a struggle for Cerebral teams. And the last unit is going to be version 1 Law 6 Plus. His 6 Plus is so good. So, so good. And you can partner him up with a friend Luffy and Ace. Run a really powerful free spirit team. And his special ability got so much better with his 6 Plus as well. So you can kind of dedicate him on your team. Uh, you know, as just a, a unit that will allow you to just go through barriers. And not only that, he's a cooldown reducer as well. And his special alone actually does a lot of damage. It does like 200k damage to an enemy. So it's pretty cool. And um, teams that kind of utilize this really well would be like Luffy and Ace because you can activate his special ability. And then Luffy Ace's AoE damage, 75 times their attack, AoE goes through barriers. So you can kill off mob characters with barriers and stuff. And you can run this on a lot of other teams. Like the specific team that I used him on recently, speaking of V2 Rayleigh before, where I farmed Jesus Burgess, running V2 Lore. Uh, V1 Law 6 Plus and also V2 Dofi to allow Doflamingo special to bypass barriers. That shit is pretty broken. And uh, yeah, you can do some really crazy stuff with this lore. And I mentioned his captain ability before. It is actually a little bit annoying how you have to hit perfect specifically, but you can partner him up with Luffy Ace. And if you're partnering anything up with Luffy and Ace, it's going to be really good. And that's the main reason why I leave him in this tier. If any of these units were going to drop down to tier 2, it would be that Psy lore. But I think at this current time, at this current meta, I do think V1 lore deserves to be here. And now we reach tier 0 where we have the best legends in the game. So we got to start off with Lucy. We already know how good he is. He's not going anywhere anytime soon, in my opinion. Uh, we're getting very close to that gear 4 meta, though, which means, you know, we might have to do a little bit of shifting. But Lucy is still, you know, clearing a lot of content, even like some of the most difficult content, like Jesus Burgess that just came out in the Colosseum. He doesn't even have any type advantage at all on his crew, and he's still demolishing the content, you know. He's really good, like you just can't deny how good Lucy is and the fact that you can run Strength X quick, you know, three of the five colors in the game on his teams, you have a lot of flexibility, not as much as some other legends, but you have some pretty good flexibility and no, that's pretty much it, you know, we all know how good Lucy is. Next is going to be Vinsmoke Judge. Now, he should be getting his 6 plus relatively soon on Global, which makes him even better than what he already is. Uh, honestly, at this current time, I'm not a big fan of Judge myself, just because his special ability not being guaranteed orbs is so frustrating. If you guys were on my stream and we're trying to do one of the forest with the Judge team and trying to get that full board of orbs, that was extremely frustrating. Now, Judge is still a little bit restrictive. You have to have one of every color in your team. But remember, you know, you can still run the Germa team, and that still works quite fine. But, you know, the Germa team doesn't get around everything. You know, you don't have a, a unit that's dedicated to getting over certain debuffs. Reiju is kind of like your utility unit on the team, and she only gets rid of, I think, three different or four different debuffs, where she doesn't even get rid of attack down at this current time. So once the Germa squad get their five and six pluses, they're going to be like, again, one of the god teams because they can get around like everything pretty much. So at this current time, Judge is still really good, a lot better than every single other legend that we've already talked about, but he's going to get even better once they get their five and six pluses on global. Version 2 Doflamingo. I love this character. He is probably one of my favorite legends in the game at this current time. His special ability is god tier. I feel like the developers uh, of One Piece Treasure Cruise kind of screwed up with his development of how this character was supposed to be built i think that two times overkill damage is way too much and being able to use this guy to just demolish final stage of bosses is absolutely stupid saying that i still love this character to bits he's a really good character even as a captain as well a 3.9 captain to driven but you do uh, you are kind of restricted with the fact that you have to have six driven characters specifically on your crew so you can't have any variation outside of the driven class and that is the doflamingo downfall in the fact that you know driven can't get rid of everything in the game so there are still debuffs that driven still can't get around but 
they're still one of the best classes in the game and Doflamingo carries the driven class just up until this tier zero like I don't think there's going to be much in the game that Doflamingo will be able to you know not get around for a while but you know at this current time Doflamingo is probably one of the top three legends in the game Next is going to be Luffy and Ace, who I definitely think is a really fun legend to use. And uh, not only is he fun, but he's extremely powerful. And the fact that, you know, Free Spirit had recently just got additions like uh, the Limited Rare Crew Bonnie just enables them, you know, once again to just be another powerful class in the game. You know, Free Spirit and Cerebral and Driven, those three classes specifically are the top three classes in the game on Global right now. And Luffy and Ace just enable you to just demolish content. And the fact that his special ability is so good as well, it is actually a universal orb boost. The orb manipulation that Luffy and Ace do is only for Free Spirit characters, but the actual orb that he gives to all units is actually like a, a universal you can run him on any team and be a two times all boost um, so that's actually pretty good as well and the swap mechanic obviously the swap mechanic is so busted being able to get around so many different debuffs paralysis despair slot bind and you can just get rid of it for free with this character so it's absolutely stupid like this character demolished the blackbeard forest just because of all the despair and slot bind and this guy could just switch and get rid of it it's stupid, man. I love Luffy and Ace. Definitely deserves a tier 1 positioning. Next, we've got V2 Shanks, who partners extremely well with the other character sitting right next to him, version 2 Sakazuki. So with these two characters, I guess I'll talk about them together. Um, Shanks specifically is great because he is, you know, a universal 3.5 captain where you can run any colors you want to get around the boss and you're going to be good. The thing is, is because he is int, you typically, typically want to be running him on a mono int team. And this is where Akainu comes in clutch because Akainu is a strength and an int. 3.25 captain and one of the cool things that I've been you know kind of realizing whilst using these two characters together is I actually prefer Akainu as the captain now some people might say that's kind of stupid Shanks is a health booster he's a higher attack multiplier why wouldn't you Shanks as a captain now I think Shanks still is a good like a really top tier captain but the thing about Shanks is, is he has such a good limit break ability uh, for his crewmate ability so his sailor ability is going to make sight orbs beneficial to all characters. So if you're running a kind of your captains and you have your shanks as a sub, you're going to have strength, int, and sigh beneficial to all characters. And also with a kind of being a strength captain, you can run limited rare recruit Bonnie on the team for god tier utility and some healing. And Bonnie makes recovery orbs beneficial to all characters. So you can have strength, int, sigh, and recovery orbs all beneficial to your team all the time just by having the Akanu Captains and then the Bonnie and the Shank sub. Those four units together are like the core of like all the Akanu teams that I'm building right now for like just all the content. And uh, yeah, this shit is so OP, man. And just the fact that Akainu, you know, hit six perfects, do a million damage. And he's a 3.25 Captain, which doesn't seem like a lot. But the thing is, you can go ahead and kill like a bunch of mob characters. You might not kill everything on screen. You might leave a couple things alive, but his end of turn damage will kill everything else that didn't die during that turn. And that's what I love about Akainu is like, you don't kill everything, but the things that you don't kill just gets killed anyway by his captain ability. And these two characters partnered together, Shanks, 2.25 attack boost and a chain booster. And you got Akainu, who is a 2.25 orb booster. If you go ahead and use these two characters together, you're dealing like 8-9 million damage to basically every color. Um, it, it's pretty stupid. So, these two characters together, if you have them, be blessed. It's a god tier combination. <laughs> the last character on the tier list that we're going to be discussing is version 2 Kuzan. So, with all of the new characters that have come out in the new batch, they work extremely well with Kuzan, and there's a whole bunch of other characters that already work really well with Kuzan as well. And a lot of people, you know, want to make the argument, who's better, Kuzan or Akainu? Honestly, they're both really good. On paper, I think that Kuzan should be better, but with all the applications of all the strength and int characters that you can utilize with Akainu, I do think Akainu is slightly better just with what he can do in the application sense. But on paper, Kuzan really should be better. He has a better multiplier, he has a health boost, and he's an attack booster, not an orb booster, which means that you don't have to rely on getting orbs. Like, you can be slot binded and you'll still be good for a boost. So, yeah, Kuzan should be better, but he is still a really good top tier character. Obviously, better than every single other legend on tier 1, 
Kuzanetsu and Notable that we've already talked about in this video. So yeah, I think Kuzan is going to be a great unit. You know, you can use Sengoku, who's your all booster. You got Kuzan, your attack booster, and you got Hina, your affinity booster for your quick and side characters. So you need two other characters and you're golden. You know, the, this team is so good. Um, but it's kind of outshadowed by the fact that V2 Shanks is so powerful as a subunit for Akainu teams. So it really depends on you know, what you kind of like and what characters you have. If you have better Psy and quick characters, Kuzan's obviously going to be a better unit for you. But if you have Shanks, you want to get your hands on Akainu, basically. Now, all these characters, it's hard to say which one is the best one because all of these tier 0 characters are so good. It's hard to say which one is number one. However, next month when we do get Gear 4 and Nami, or we should be getting Gear 4 and Nami, I think there's going to have to be some changes because Gear 4 is like so much better than everything else. He might have to be in his own tier and then we'll have to like figure out where characters are kind of placed. But I think that this is a pretty fair assumption of how the meta is on Global right now ranging from tier 2, tier 1, and tier 0. If you guys have any other opinions or any other questions or... If you just want to give your certain opinions on what you think the best legends are in the game right now, your, what's your tier zero? Let me know down in the, in the comments section. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. And if you guys did, make sure to go ahead and smack the like button down below. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.